Hey, it's Matt with Matucci Built, and today we're going to be going away from the 3rd Gen 4Runner. Um, I know a lot of you won't like this, but we're still going to be in the off-roading or just camping area, and we're going to be doing a trailer drawer today. Uh, my parents have a trailer that has a really deep drawer, and you can see it behind me, and we're going to jump into uh, CAD software and look at it. Here is the model of my design. It incorporates a different style of slides, but it is still pretty basic. Let's toggle this top off, and then we'll toggle this frame off too. So this is pretty basic. We're just going to be using some skateboard bearings, and that frame that you just saw, I'll put it back on, is going to ride on them, and it has a little bearing on the end as well, and this is all square tubing, so we'll be able to just make a little notch in there so that it can slide in that slot that you saw on this guy, and then there'll be a bolt to stop it, and that slot will stop at a point. That will make it so that it can go back and forth. Um, there are some little guides for the sides, and yeah, I feel like this design is pretty basic. Let's see if we can move this this way. Yeah, as we can see, this guy will just be able to slide back and forth just like this. And it's all pretty basic design, pretty good for me learning the weld and everything in that area. I'm going with a design like this not because I like ugly things but because this is extremely cheap. Um, I already had all the square tubing and six foot drawer slides are I believe around three hundred dollars. It's pretty ridiculous and this I get to make it all and design it myself. I've also done a little bit of finite element analysis that is just some computer testing on these on this slide and it can take quite a bit of weight on the end here. All right, let's get into it. So I've already gotten started here on my one inch tubing. I didn't have full lengths, so I stitched some together. Um, and then just a lot of tack welds and magnets to make everything angled. Also some right angle clamps. And then here are my welder settings. For the welder, I'm using the Yes Welder MIG 205 DS. Currently I'm using 110. And with that, the wire I'm using is Yes Welder's gasless flux core, just regular steel. And then I'm using my Makita grinder with a face shield. I drilled some holes for inside ventilation. And then here are some of my welds, but take it easy on me. I'm really, I'm really new to welding, and we're just grinding them anyway. So as long as they're structurally sound, it's all good. And then here are some more. I was then ready to put the tabs onto the frame so that I can mount plywood onto the top. So you can just see here that I cut it out of the tubing and welded those on to each corner and then ground that all down so that we could have mounting for the top. The next task was to cut the bottom rails to length so that we could put the big old slot in them. We ran into a little problem. Um, this saw blade is a seven and a quarter, and the saw that I have is six and a half. So it turned out that I could not use this saw blade with this saw. So I borrowed a skill saw from work and it cut a very bad line. The, the skill brand seems to be just more cheaply made than all the other tools. Um, so I ordered up a six and a half um, and then I'll have to stitch this together just with some tack welds probably. We'll just call it weight reduction and do that one as well. That one turned out better but it's still not good. I got the blade in and now we can put it in the saw and get going. So all I have here 
You can see that I actually ground down all those tack welds. All I have is a bunch of, I think these are 3 16 guys, and then also an eighth one, and then I'll clamp that to this. This is a little protruding, so I'll be able to go against that, and I'm just going to clamp it here, go down a bit, and then stop and then at the clamp, and then reclamp it. I'm probably going to flip this over so that this is the bottom. Then I'm going to go a depth of 0.94 on the saw. Inches, that is, so that I get a little bit of a channel in the bottom. And my guide can go through that. Um, it's important to note that I am wearing a respirator pretty much this whole entire time, grinding and welding. And then right when I'm doing grinding, I'm using that, and then obviously a welding hood when I'm welding. I'll make another cut where I will pull out this eighth inch thick thing to get a thickness of an eighth inch plus whatever the blade thickness is. These guys are slotted and they look significantly better than the other one. They're super straight. Now we're going to move on to the parts that slide inside of those tubes. Um, I just have four dimensions here that will sum up these and I'll be cutting all this on the bandsaw so an order of operations does matter. So our overall length, I'm going to cut this all the way down but not first at 1.94 inches. It is slightly long, but um, we can sand it at the end. And that might just fit in that little channel and center forward. And then 1.1 is gonna be this little mark here. Um, we're gonna slot that down to this. This is just a little bit farther than halfway. Um, so we're gonna have to slot this first because if we just cut it here first, we're not going to be able to chuck it up in the bandsaw. And then these other two measurements are for the thick part. We have to cut a slot first, just like this, all the way down here. And then we can cut the overall thickness of it to get something that looks a lot like this. This will go in the tube. are really simple they just pretty much slide together and then we can weld it in just a little slide action weld it in there this one is a lot tighter I'm gonna have to magnet up that one to make it straight but this one I'm just gonna weld um, I'm making sure to weld on the bot the yeah the bottom section this is a little shorter and that slot that I cut in the tubing will run right in here, so we don't want that to be filled with weld. Okay, so I also cut eight of these just angle iron. These are gonna go on the sides of these rails to mount down to the trailer. Um, these ones are a little long, but we can grind them off after. And then we can also put these on. For these guys, I did put a little chamfer on the edge. Um, and then I'm gonna put them just right here. Like, I don't know if you can see that. Up against the metal this way. Um, that chamfer will just soak up the edge a little bit, but I'm gonna put them as far to the forward 
as possible for leverage reasons. So I just got a lot done off of camera. Um, here is how it's gonna look. We're gonna first of all drill these holes um, just in a little bit probably sometime. Um, then the sideways ones and then we're gonna put a bolt in there so that it stops when it comes and hits here. Um, we did get bearings on those little guys and these things are the the whole entire plate is the things we made earlier. Um, I want to slot the holes that these go through just so we have some up and down movement. This side actually doesn't even have it on um, because of that. The hole is too short and it's pinching the tube too much. Um, here's what I have set up in there though. There's these little like spacers and these washers that come pretty commonly with these skateboard bearings that I talked about earlier. Um, and then on the front, I just put an M8 rod through because I don't have any bolts long enough. But under here is similar. Let's move it. Right now we need some more adjusting. But as you can see, I split one of those bigger um, spacers and then put one of those black ones on the outside. This one's actually looks like it's a little V-ing, but we'll be able to get some new bolts. Bolt that up. Um, as you just saw, it fell off the track sideways. So I'm going to grab some of these tubes that I already cut up. They're slightly shorter than three inches and we're just going to put them right on the side here so that when we pull we're going to put it on both sides so that when we pull it will hit against those and I'll update you when we're getting ready for paint I think actually one more thing real fast we're going to cut these holes with the plywood when we put on the top To secure the top to the frame, I am just using these one inch self-tapping screws. I found the general location by just flipping the frame upside down on the plywood. And these guys will do 20 to 12 gauge steel. So that is just fine. And then I just drive them in with this eight mil bit and they go in pretty easily as you'll see in just one second. A bigger drill bit was used to flatten out the heads of the screws and then it was on to annoying my neighbors and sanding up the plywood. I didn't really take too much precaution because I was just going to coat it and I don't really care too much about looks. I then found out that I didn't take the curves in the opening into account on my design so the frame was hitting those curves before it was even contacting my frame so it would not slide at all because it wasn't even contacting those bearings. This issue I was just going to do a whole nother like metal frame spacer kind of thing which would have been a pain a lot of cutting and more welding but I just asked my dad what he thought and he just recommended some 2x4s so he actually picked up some 2x3s but this goes to show that even me with a college degree can have worse ideas than someone that just has a lot of experience with uh, practical stuff. So I have them here. These things are actually extremely light, but we have to cut them down to six inches. So I have them marked up and then just a saw and I'll just throw this square on there and go and just slice it off. And then we'll be able to mount these 
to the bed inside here and then mount the rails that I made on top of those in here. But we gotta get all this stuff out and get all the way back there to mount them. After a few saw adjustments, I was ready to empty out the compartment, but get ready for some booty shots. My girlfriend might not like me showing you them, but I know you'll like them. So I have just a dry fit going right here. This is how it's going to look. If we can see our tabs are too big so I'm going to have to cut those 3x4s again and wedge it under there. But we can probably put these 2x4s, I'm not going to finish them on here. And then we'll just do that on both sides. This is just a dry fit up so it's going to be a little rough but that's kind of how we're looking. Got those two by threes in, but I'm running out of daylight, so I'll continue tomorrow. This is taking forever, so I just went and did some work off camera. Um, I did grease those areas. I haven't painted it yet, and I don't think I will for a little bit at least. Um, but those little slides are greased. I put those, put it in with some lag bolts. They are they're three sixteenths, and pretty much I buttoned everything up. I still need a vacuum in here and put on the top, we'll do that real fast and show you. But I have all the bolts tightened and this thing is smooth. It comes out real easily. So here it is and this thing is sweet. It just goes right in. That stops now so it can't go too far in. And that's nice. If you saw those little tabs that I put on the underside of this front, that was for a leg. So there it is. It makes the trailer way more usable with that area. Um, it also makes it really nice for like uh, a workspace. You can clear it off and it'd make a great little kitchen area. My dad has a propane set up right next to it so he can set up his camp chef little stove and then also use that space for preparing or just any other things. Um, I definitely try to push the weight towards the back. Um, being out on the edge will make it more susceptible to bending. But overall it was a decent project and really good for my first fabrication project. Well, one of my first. But next video we're going to be getting back to the third gen 4Runner. Give you a hint on that, that is the wheels. Um, if you like this video please like and subscribe. See ya.